Every year or so, we add a new video to our Bit series, a series on YouTube dedicated to teaching computer users about bits and how they affect them in everyday computer use. Bits are everywhere in the tech world, and they're really just small pieces of information stored on a computer. And today we're going to take a look at the differences between a 32 and a 64-bit operating system. Some users may not know the difference, and some users may be completely unaware as to what the subject is. There are a lot of tech enthusiasts out there, but most computer users are just regular consumers, and that's great. But I will admit that the difference between these two types of systems has not been explained that well to the consumer market. So what is all the fuss about between these two types of systems? Well, let's take a look. In terms of numbers, the maximum value a 32-bit number can handle is about 4 billion. The actual number is a bit higher. This can apply to many different things. Colors in an image, sounds that a music file produces. But for personal computing, it applies to the amount of RAM that we can use in the system. We'll talk more about RAM in a bit. A 32-bit operating system can allocate about 4 gigabytes of random access memory, that is RAM. Some limits may vary based on hardware and software configuration, but mathematically that is the limit. There are some exceptions, such as a PAE, which can address more than 4 gigs of RAM on a 32-bit operating system. So we receive the maximum value of a 32-bit number by taking 2 to the 32nd power. Now if we raise that to the 64th power, that is the maximum number we can receive with a 64-bit value. When translated into bytes, and then into exabytes, we can get about 16 exabytes of RAM. That's about 16 billion gigabytes. So this large number basically removes any kind of RAM cap for technology of today. Now let's talk about why RAM is so special. Think about your hard drive. You store all of your personal files on there, and you have a lot of space to store all of your data. RAM works a little bit differently though. It stores data temporarily to help the computer. It does not store as much data as a hard drive, but the advantage is that RAM can transfer data way faster than a hard drive can, even faster than a solid state drive. So if the RAM acts faster than a hard drive, a user would typically want more data to be temporarily stored on the RAM. So the more free RAM that the computer has available to itself, the faster the system can respond under a heavier load. Sometimes when you're using a computer, you see a not responding sign on your window. Or if you're running a lot of apps at once, things start to slow down a bit. Or if you're running an intensive application like Adobe products, those applications are resource intensive. And the more RAM that is free to run those applications, the faster those apps will respond and perform tasks under heavier system loads. To keep it simple, you can do more things at once faster than normal. So now you know a little bit of what bits are and why RAM is important. So what now? Well, the good news is a lot of modern computers already sell with 64-bit versions of an operating system and a 64-bit processor. But maybe you're not sure what kind of system you're running. Well, here's a few things you can check. The first thing to check is your CPU's architecture. Then check to make sure you are running a 64-bit operating system. It is also recommended that you have over 4 gigabytes of RAM installed if you are going to take advantage of a 64-bit architecture. And also make sure that when you're running an application that it is 64-bit. 32-bit apps will run on a 64-bit system, but you'll only get the true advantage with 64-bit applications. If you're on Windows 8, press Windows key I on your keyboard and click PC Info. Windows 8 will tell you if your operating system and CPU are 64-bit based. It will also tell you if one differs from the other. Other versions of Windows may only tell you whether or not your operating system is 64 or 32-bit. They may not report on what type of processor you have directly. To figure out if your processor is 64-bit capable, you may have to look up the model. If you are on a Mac, then determining whether or not your system is 64 or 32-bit is much easier. Essentially, if you're on an Intel Core 2 Duo or later, you are 64-bit. There was, however, an older computer that was 64-bit capable as well, and that was the Power Mac G5. We have received a lot of great comments and questions over the years, and we are not hesitant to answer any other questions you may have. Just leave them in the comments below. However, I'm going to quickly go over a few common questions that I get. A lot of people ask me if this affects games. Typically, this would not affect games that much because a lot of games do not require more than 4GB of RAM to run properly. 
However, some heavier and more intensive games and game mods, such as the Half-Life 2 cinematic mod, recommend that you have at least 4GB of RAM. I tried running the game on a 32-bit system that could only address about 3GB of RAM, and the game kept stuttering and it had some crashing issues. So in that case, having a 64-bit system and at least 4GB of RAM is not a bad idea. Another frequently asked question we get is about upgrading. The good news is, when you buy a copy of Windows, Microsoft gives you a 32-bit and a 64-bit copy. If you are running a 32-bit system and you want to install 64-bit, insert the 64-bit disk into your computer and boot into that installer. You can upgrade there from a 32-bit to a 64-bit system, but this will wipe out your personal information, so make sure you have a backup of your data. However, you may be given the option to move your data into the Windows.old folder, so your personal information will still be on the computer, but it will not be in the normal folders and directories that it was before the installation, so your files may be not in the same place they were before you upgraded. But it is still recommended that you have a separate backup, and make sure you have a 64-bit compatible CPU, because without 64-bit hardware, you could not run 64-bit software. So that is the quick rundown of the 64-bit advantage for personal computing. We hope you learned something, and if you have any questions, let us know, and don't forget to check out some of the other videos listed below. Thanks for watching. Videos are just the beginning. Check out these other great websites for great content from the Computer Clan, and subscribe for more great videos from Real Deal Productions.